Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Timberborn. Ah, a fantastic game, a beaverpunk-style colony builder that, ever since I first tasted on the channel many, many moons ago, I've pretty much had a steady trickle of people asking me when or if I might be covering this as a full series. Well, here's your answer. About a week and a half ago, I posted a uh, rather simple poll uh, titled Those in the No No, and the only options were Iron Teeth or Folk Tales, and surprisingly, 62% of you voted for Iron Teeth. Now, I am not familiar with Iron Teeth. I do know that there is a quirk in regards to the way that their population grows, but I've never actually played with this faction, and so I am, for all intents and purposes, going into this blind with regards to the particular quirks and pitfalls that come along with playing the Iron Teeth faction. So, with that in mind, I will be playing on the Plains map. It's one of the larger maps, and is also at least a map that I am familiar with. So we're trading a little bit of uh, foreknowledge with the fact that I barely know anything about the faction that we're going to be playing. We are, of course, going to be playing on hard, though. So, uh, as the game says, the humans didn't survive and neither will you. I accept your challenge, game, and I will hopefully exceed your expectations and my own uh, dramatically. So, with all that said and done, let's go ahead and jump into the game, and if by the end of this episode you decide that you enjoyed what you saw and you'd like to see a little bit more, then a like on the video and, of course, some feedback down in the comments. Oh, dear lord, please give me some tips on how to play Iron Teeth. will be greatly appreciated. But let's go and get this colony started. Welcome to the village of Darkvale. Uh, yeah, look, okay, we knew where this was going. You knew where this was going when you decided to vote the Iron Teeth. But before we get down to the very important business of preparing ourselves, considering we've got very little time, we need to get a proper introduction to our beaver settlers. So give me just a moment to... Uh, 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 very politely interrogate them all to find out their real names. And in no particular order, please say hello to Pie Good, Naive Water Bear, Lost Dry Socks, Platinum Toast, The Unspeakable, and Encrypt and Plumber Smack. Thank you ever so much for your support on the channel. Now you will notice that I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, asked the real names of the children beaver just yet because, uh, well, they haven't had time to decide on what their real name is going to be. This will be the rite of passage of the Iron Teeth. You are born a, a, a young beaverling and your parents have to give you a name because they can't just co go around calling you, hey you, hey you. Uh, then once you, once you become an adult, you go through the croppings and you choose your adult name. And it is that point that you Will, uh, you will be given a name. Also, this, uh, this, <laughs> the grim reality is, this means I'm not going to be giving a name to someone who might not make it to adulthood. Uh, once you've made it to adulthood, you've got, probably got a, uh, a reasonable chance of making it until, you know, you, the inevitable uh, old age takes you out. But there we are. Welcome to the world of Timberborn. Now, we don't really have too much time to, uh, to uh, chat about Timberborn, we kind of need to get down with the gathering because the very first thing we're going to need to do with quite significant urgency is build a dam. We are playing on hard, so uh, as the as the the game makes a point of saying, the humans didn't survive, and neither will you. Lovely, I know, but uh, probably kind of true, actually. Uh, so we are going to want to very much get down a little bit of food gathering, a fair bit of wood gathering, and if you will uh, forgive me for the uh, early game pauses, we are really up against the clock on on hard mode, so uh, it'll it'll get a little bit less frantic once we're in. A, uh, once we're out of the initial drought, because this drought will be a big problem. So what we've got over here, we've got a gatherer flag, they will gather berries, and we've got lumber flags over here, and the beavers will start, hopefully, going out and chopping down trees, one might hope. Uh, yes, we've designated the tree, tree, so there should be people going out, or rather beavers going out and getting those down. Now, the next thing, let's just make sure that they are actually set up. They are. The next thing we're going to want is to take care of water. 
that is obviously going to be a very important resource. Uh, so we're going to pop that one there, and that leaves us a little bit of room there for a second one later on. Uh, this is going to be the highest priority construction right now, and it'll also be one of the highest priorities for people to man thereafter. And for the time being, this one's going to be a high priority. Uh, right now, we've only got seven adults, and we've actually only got two adults who've got any uh, any free time to themselves so uh, we kind of want to make sure that we're making use of this at all times uh, if we can get another two wood cutters areas set up that would be fantastic now as i mentioned we want to set up a dam it's well it's not going to be the most efficient of dams but it'll be our dam damn it and uh, we will love it there we go this will only require seven tiles to cross uh, over here now it's not a dam that we can control it's basically built the way it is. Uh, so this will allow the water to rise on this side, but once it reaches a, a certain threshold, it'll just, uh, it'll just trickle over the top of the dam. So it's not gonna be uh, controllable. Uh, not that we would really need it here because it's not a particularly deep area, but we are going to want to get that set up. Another thing that would be good to do very early on is to get that set up as well. If we can get that done, then what we'll see is that uh, a bit of water will start filling up there and it'll just give us a little bit more time to play with things. Now, I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a little bit whilst we wait for the beavers to get some of the early buildings built. It's morning breaks. Our little beavers had to sleep out in the cold. It was a bit of a rough night, but uh, I'm sure they'll forgive us. Now, we are one um, job over... Uh, over capacity because I, honestly I, I because I'd already set this down in my head I'd already assigned the job to it but that isn't how it works uh, nevertheless I've gone ahead and just paused this one so we're not taking up time now what that has meant is that we are now producing water but that water isn't going to be good enough as is so what I would very very much like to do is get at least two water tanks done this one should be done as a high priority and then these at this point, I'm going to say all of these need to be a uh, sorry, a, a high priority, and that one's a very high priority. We need some way to store water. Not so much as a backup for if we don't get the dam done in time, because we don't have long before the first drought uh, on hard mode. But more so that we've just got that uh, a bit of an easier place for our beavers to be able to collect water from. This can hold at most 15 water. This can hold 30 water, so it makes sense to try and pop things in there. I really love the look of the water in this game, by the way. I love the way that the uh, flow moves around. You'll notice that it will change speeds as it grows wider or grows narrower as well. And that is something that we're going to want to play into as we, we get things going. Right, the next uh, item on the agenda is right now, A, our beavers have to sleep outside. And actually, this is something that we, we're going to want to kind of cover. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to rename you again. Can I bring you up? There we go. Right, so over here, uh, you know, they sleep first hunger. These are their basic needs. But if we can do things like give them shelter, their life expectancy goes up by a quarter. And also they get faster um, if we give them uh, a varied diet of, of better foods than just berries. Various uh, statistics, life expectancy, work, speed, strength, so how much they can carry, uh, carrying speed, how fast they can move whilst carrying stuff. All of these things can be improved. So it is really, really important to try and get these things up and running early. Uh, that being said, though, one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to pop down a storage spot for berries in particular. Nothing else should be allowed in here but berries. And the reason why I'm doing that and placing it so close to the uh, main area, I think Barry's was actually up at the top, wasn't it? Uh, in the bees, yes, it was right at the very beginning. Is because the iron teeth, and this is where I'm going to start running into problems, I suspect. Uh, they they uh, increase their population in a very different way from the folk tales, which is the only other, uh, which is the only um, faction that I've I've ever actually played in the past uh how are we doing for what is have they got a decent amount of logs uh i mean we're going okay uh the way that the iron teeth increase is they have breeding pods which are less interesting than you might well actually more interesting but it definitely goes in a different direction than you might initially think they're basically i i don't know berry water wombs artificial berry water wombs in barrels and they just have 
beaver fetuses in there growing. I, it's very mad scientist, if you ask me. But uh, I mean, they make it work. So you know, who are we to uh, who are we to to tell them that they're doing it wrong? Uh, with that said, though, let's get one of those up and running because if we have oh, actually, we've got one uh, one beaver has grown up really already. Oh, fantastic! Well, I need to find out your actual name then. Everyone, say hello to I know how to soup. What a fine, strong beaver name that is. Now, one of the uh, things that we can find out if we actually have a look at the beavers is their age. Not all beavers are equal in that regard, as you can see. That is going to come a crop. We are going to have some beavers die of old age in the relatively near future, if I'm honest. So uh, that's definitely something that we need to keep in mind. So we need to start replenishing their their numbers as quickly as we can and it would also be very nice if we could get this up and running as well but as more beaver children grow up then we'll have more hands to uh, help with the workload and uh, little by little oh there we go they're all all thirsty and this is why you want to get this up as one of the first buildings you actually make uh, in my opinion right now we've got this set up it needs a little bit of water and a little bit of berries and then a little while later out pops a new beaver i again mad science all the way kids are our future we need 12 more by next month i hmm yeah very very mad science one might even go as far as to say dark science but uh, either way it is night time you'll notice that i have actually increased their their working hours and i'm kind of thinking of increasing it again because we kind of need to get more work done now if you increase the work hours after they've already gone on break it won't have an effect until the next uh, in the next day but they're going to need to Get a lot more work done. We've got six more of these to build. That is not going to happen quickly. All right. I'll see you in a couple of moments. Okay, that is our warning. We have three days to finish four dams. That might be a tricky one indeed. However, we do have a couple of new, uh, or rather one new child to name. So let's go and uh, first and foremost find out what their true name is. Everyone, please say hello to Phoenix Tillia. Welcome to the colony. All right, I've set up uh, two new uh lumber areas just down here to try and help out a little bit and you know what i'm going to get rid of this one as well since uh, that will massively shorten the movement time to get uh, things going we have done a good job of uh, clear cutting this forest honestly the iron teeth very very uh dappling like in in at least uh, so far as they're up abhorrence towards the leafy devils that are trees suffer not the trees to live seems to be the dabbling expression but uh, we are going to have to plant them so we're going to uh, sadly have to farm trees it's it's a terrible state of affairs but uh, we will of course make sure that they are kept in well regulated areas not allowed to grow out of control just enough allowed so that we can harvest them during some sort of Hunger Games like survival of the fittest competition between the trees. Uh, only the opposite, actually. The, the most fit trees will be the ones chopped down because they will have the strongest lumber. We will, we will allow the weak ones to live and tell tale of the, the terrible things that will befall those who resist. Honestly, the dapplings and trees, I've, I've never quite been able to work out why they hate trees so much, but uh, they seem to be happy hating them, so I guess I'll let it go. Uh, nevertheless, we really do actually need these to be built up rather urgently, so let's get that going, shall we? Uh, further to that, how about we pop down another one just over here? No, that one is quite far away, so I don't imagine the uh, logs will actually make their way down too quickly, unfortunately. Still, worth us getting it up and running as soon as we can. I, if it weren't for the, the, the young trees here, I would try and move uh, a little bit closer so that our beavers had less to walk. Uh, if we have a quick gander though, they are starting to stockpile materials, which is nice, but this is really now down to the wire. If we can't finish this in time, we're actually going to genuinely be in some pretty, uh, pretty uh, rough situations there. 
Uh, there we go, another one set up, and we've got a beaver heading over. Now, they actually need work to do, and that little icon then there is telling me that I haven't designated any trees nearby for them to chop. That's fine, let's get that going. There you are. Enjoy your work. Now, it does look like it, things are speeding up, and talking about things speeding up, notice how fast the water is moving around here. I'm actually quite pretty happy with that. We've also managed to demolish the little blockage there, so this is filling up as well, and if we should manage to get the dam built in time, and I really can't imagine that we won't be able to, then uh, we should be able to fill that up as well, which give us a little bit of extra water to get through the first drought. We've got two days to go and only three more of these to finish, and one of them is almost there as we speak. And in fact, if we check out the uh, the lumberjack flags, we can see that most of them have started to accrue large amounts of, of lumber there. But Venjo just grew up, so you know what we need to do now. Please, everyone, welcome Fooey to the colony. Thank you ever so much for your patron support. We're actually getting uh, fairly low on the uh, the nameless. It's going to have to cycle again soon. It's kind of uh, that, that special time in a deck builder where you run out of cards and have to reshuffle your discard pile. Fantastic. I approve. Uh, right, let's have a look. We've only got two, but neither one is finished. We're going to need 40 logs in total. We've got four there, we've got 14 there, 14 there. That's looking very, very nice. 16 there. Yeah, we should be fine. Uh, though on that note, I do think I would like to have a storage area for logs. Somewhere down around here, perhaps? Hmm. What I would like to do is have these storage areas far away from where the, the fields would be. Uh, as I feel that this is going to be an important one for us. Uh, we could ha even have something like that over here, but I kind of kind of like the idea of having this right there. It kind of uh, feels like we might be able to make use of that in some way to rise up the elevation and also then have a second story. Because the I, I would say that the Iron Teeth, more than the Folk Tales, are all about building vertically and, and kind of jamming in as much stuff as they can into the tightest uh, amount of space. Uh, I, I quite like that. We'll almost certainly redesign things as we go because this is very much a, a case right now of this is uh, a necessity rather than a, a luxury, but uh, later on we will shift things around a little bit. How are we doing for berries? Uh, we are not doing well. That is not good. That is not good at all actually. Right, well, on the topic of farms, let's have a quick look at what we can do. We could probably fit some farms up here as well. I think that would probably be a reasonable place to pop one. So let's get a farm there. I'm going to draw this path all the way up. And uh, oh, there's the. we should try and make use of as much space as we possibly can. What I could do is have some uh, stairs going up here at some point. Or we can just do a little bit of something like that. Now, I would like for this to be... Uh, I'm going to say the arm is going to be a low priority for now. This one's going to be a regular priority. And these both remain high priorities. In fact, at this point, not that it really makes much difference because I don't have that many buildings, but just because I want to uh, kind of have the, uh, the information there that this is the stuff that should be done first. I'll pop that up onto the very highest priority that I can. Uh, I will go ahead and I will plonk you down by, well, I guess we'll we'll keep that one there, I suppose, for now. Uh, are there many berries in there? There are, actually. So I guess we're not going to be tearing that down for the time being. But I would like to plant some crops. Early on, we're just going to go for carrots. Uh, there's no reason to do anything else right now, I don't think. Later on, it would be great for us to have potatoes. And in fact, it's really good for us to have a little bit of everything, uh, it, truth be told. So carrots, potatoes, and sunflowers. Carrots, I believe, four days gives you three carrots. You'd have five days to get two sunflower seeds. Six days to get one potato. Now that looks like the the worst of all of them, but you can grill the potatoes as long as you've got fuel to uh, to fire the grill. But that one is probably the most bang for buck for the time that your farmers are going to be spending on it. But uh, we'll just cr try and get that set up for now. We've got 1.3 days to go. We are very nearly finished 
with this. That one is a little ways off and I'm a little bit concerned, I'm not going to lie, but we will see how things go. I shall uh, meet you back here to discover whether we can manage to uh, trap some of this uh, life-giving water in our little, uh, well, tiny little corner of the river over here, or whether it all bleeds away and we have to get through the drought, which we don't know how long this drought is going to be, but on hard they start kind of long and they only get longer. This will probably not be enough. So really it does come down to life or death. No pressure. And with less than half a day left, they manage to finish the dam. There we go. We are, for the time being, somewhat safe. Uh, at this stage... Oh, wow, you got 20 logs there still. Both of you have got 20 logs. Okay, well, we don't need you working there, so uh, you can crack on and do other things. In fact, what we probably do need is for this to be finished so that we can empty these. Uh, that being said, though, we also need to get more of the uh, berry gatherers set up. And in fact, that's going to be a strong focus. We should actually uh, drop these around a little bit. Though at this point, I'm going to say that you have definitely earned a bit of downtime. Oh my lord, you have been run ragged this entire time. That being said, you've actually done okay for the sleep, I'm not going to lie. Um, I wonder if they don't like being up at night, maybe something along that line. I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but either way, I'm very glad that that got finished. But we have had another beaver grow up. We've got Zerkoi, whose secret name is Dakota C55. An interesting name. Usually I wouldn't allow numbers in a name once it got to a, to a game, but I kind of feel that is kind of iron teeth. Yes, you are Dakota C55. To go along with uh, 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 Iowa A68. You're going to have barcodes by the end of this, as is natural for the progression of the iron teeth. Uh, right, let's have a look in here. We are actually getting along fairly well with the uh, progress there, but I am not able to prioritize building another one because simply we don't have much food and that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a worry if I'm honest. Uh, we probably don't need all of these running right now either, but uh, we do definitely need these to be built a little bit faster. Let's have a look. We've got a lot of logs that we need to build over here. We can probably help that out a little bit if we just pop down a little road there. I don't know if... Well, I can clearly see that they don't only use the roads, but it does seem to affect their pathfinding, which makes sense. Maybe the roads are just a little bit easier to move on, or maybe it's it's uh, just a, a cheaper uh, pathfind. Like, you know, basically they're relying on, on the human to have set out good paths, and then they'll kind of give those preferential treatment unless they're, they're really quite obviously, oh, this human knows nothing. How? I mean, it, is it any wonder they all went extinct? Somehow this one survived in a bunker somewhere, but uh, why we're listening to them, I don't know. Nevertheless, they don't know anything about paths. We will override that behavior. But uh, the drought is about here. In fact, if we speed things up, the, the drought will probably arrive. And this is one of the key things about this, about this game. If we uh, pause it just there, we will see that the drought is moving on. The water physics in this game are fantastic. Absolutely a joy. Now, reaching this point, it goes down no further because our little uh, dam is protecting this area. Now, this is probably going to last for a while. This little area here will last for a very long time because it's extremely deep. This will dry out, though, given, given enough time, and it's all flowing off the edge of the map. You could dam that, but then you just flood everything. Um, but you could probably dam over here and allow this to uh, be uh, flooded up for a while. But you notice how the green uh, leaves and the uh, trees start to die. The crops will die as well. It's something to be very, very mindful of. And that's why I was kind of prioritizing like storage buildings and, and anything I could, really over on the the uh, tiles over here where the green from the river doesn't reach because this is prime growing land and we're not going to have a lot of that. In fact, I'm not even sure that the iron teeth have the means to irrigate soil. I think that might be something that only the folktales have, which is going to be an interesting one, a very, very interesting one. But nevertheless, we've got our little area down here and uh, things are coming along. Now we've got some carrots planted and as long as there is water, then that will be okay. 
to some degree, I am actually tempted to put a little dam here. Now, this will serve two twofold in a way. One, they'll be able to cross that, so it'll make uh, traveling a little bit easier. Uh, there's nothing in here. That's great. Let's break that one down then. This one is going to be able to reach every every uh, berry bush here, and this one can reach all of the berry bushes over here. So we should be okay in that regard. But if we can get that built, then it will disallow this water for the general purpose. Right now, we are still pumping the water out. And as we get more and more beavers, that will be a thing that we need to be very mindful of, is, is how much water we can draw from this before it completely bleeds dry. Uh, but if we reserve a little bit over here, then these farms will probably be okay through any but the really toughest droughts. However, I am a little bit concerned for our beavers. They do not have a place to live, and they really should have one. So let's go ahead and plonk one down. Um, sure, we're going to have it right there. Again, I'm going to try and maximize the use of the space that we've got over here that isn't useful for growing. Uh, and at that point, I guess I could run a little path through there if I really wanted to. I could also put all sorts of other things there. I might even create a, a bit of a, uh, a walkway up and perhaps use some scaffolding. But on the topic of scaffolding and walkways up and such, we need to get on with some science. Dark or mad doesn't really bother me as long as it's science. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and build an inventors. Now, every 3.1 hours, this will generate three uh, like science points that we can then spend however we please, really. Uh, where do we want to place these? Uh, let's go ahead and plonk this somewhere up here. In fact, we could have two of them quite comfortably around there and even have a walkway up onto that shelf there. So let's pop these down. Now, I don't intend to build both of them, certainly not as a priority. But we'll have them in there for now because that little space there can lead into something. So I'm going to pause the construction on this one. This one is going to be allowed to be built. I want this one made as a priority because once we get that up, again, our beavers will have a fair old bit more life. In fact, 25% more life. That is really no joke. Uh, so we definitely want to get that going. We have finished the second tank and gradually the beavers will start moving things around. Now, we've still got two beavers who have nothing to do. Well, you've now got jobs. Enjoy the jobs. Uh, these beavers who work in the uh, the district itself, which we haven't named. Oh, we're going to need a name for this district. But uh, they will basically just try and fill warehouses and stockpiles. They're just haulers, general purpose haulers. Um, they have a, a limited range, as you can see, the area that they can actually get out to is greatly affected by the, uh, the paths. And on that note, one of the things that I'm going to want to do is build that path down there. We're going to want to try and get down here to these trees. I'm also going to have to decide where I'm going to be growing trees. That's actually going to be one of the first things that I try to uh, dedicate points towards, with some exceptions. There are a couple of things like a levee, which completely blocks water, will be quite nice, especially uh, where I want to build any uh, water wheels, because effectively I want to channel the flow of water through a narrow gap to speed the water up to spin the wheels faster and generate power um, because they will generate power well i'm not exactly sure if it, they generate power based on the amount of flow or if there's just a minimal threshold below which the flow is not good enough to turn the wheel so regardless i want to increase that flow so that uh, it it will get more power out of the water for, for longer at the very least but uh, this is something we're going to have to dedicate an awful lot of logs towards, unfortunately. Also, now since we've got an industrial log pile, our workers will pop up to the various areas and gather those logs wherever needed. This one is now empty, so we don't need that one to be there. I only really need one down here just to, to take care of these, so I'm going to get rid of that. Yep, and in fact, I'm actually going to remove one of the workers from there, and I'm going to unpause this uh, lumber flag, and they can gather those trees. Once all of these are cut, I will be getting rid of the lumber flag, and eventually we'll also be getting rid of these berry bushes down here. The iron teeth need berries. It's how they uh, how they grow their population. So we're never going to be entirely uh, we're never going to entirely move away from berries, even though they don't have a direct bonus for us. If we have a look down here, I don't believe there's any berry-related um, nutrition benefit. So, 
With folk teeth, you might be uh, inclined to just move away from berries as soon as you you have farmed uh, farmed t uh, fields, but we won't be doing that. Now our farmers are bored; they've got nothing to do. I really should have been paying attention to that, but uh, and these are going to take quite some time to grow. So what I'm going to do next is I am actually going to place down. Well, actually, let's have a look at the best bonus we could get. So carrots, these will give. Will you tell me what you give? There we are. Life expectancy plus thirty percent. Sunflower seeds working speed plus five percent. There isn't a potato one, but there is a grilled potato one. Strength plus thirty percent. Um, I kind of feel like saying work speed, honestly. So sure, sunflower seeds don't need any further processing, unlike potatoes. So we'll just have a farm of sunflower seeds over here. Uh, sure, we'll just plonk that down, and our beavers will get straight on that. It'll take them a little while to get it going, but that's fine. Now, this we are dedicating to berries. I could, however, allow it to store both of these as well, but right now, I think what I would rather do uh, along those lines is to have a dedicated storage for each type of food. So, every type of food can have at least 20 tiles saved up for it. Water-wise, we're doing well. We filled up all of this, so at this point... Once this is filled, it's uh, inventory. In fact, we could kind of pause it right now just to get the most out of the water. And I think I'm going to do that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't want to take any more water out of here that we don't have to. Now, I'm fairly certain that the drought, it is slowly decreasing. But this will slow that that uh, that drying up of this, this river because we're not actively taking anything out of it. And that'll give us more time for the fields. Honestly, though, I don't think we were actually in any any particular worry. This was a relatively mild drought as far as they go. But with that said, we've got a bunch of building projects to do, and uh, all we have is time to wait for them to be done. So I shall see you back in a few moments. And welcome back. The drought, as you can see, is over as the water starts to return to our river. Sadly, while you were gone, native water bear died of old age. But died of old age rather than of thirst. They died with plenty of water around, which makes me feel good considering their name. But uh, we have actually managed to get a fair bit of work done in your absence. We've got a second barrack up and running, which is now, of course, making uh, plenty of living space. We've got nine available beds, should uh, our beavers' population continue ex to expand. And in fact, that is actually kind of something that we're going to uh, bank on. We're going to place down a second breeding pot. There we go. Let's get that one up and running. I also paused the farm because nothing was ready to be harvested. However, they are just around the corner, so we really should get on with that. Uh, we are lacking uh, lacking beavers to help with all of the uh, farms though, so I'm going to start pausing the berry bush farmers. Uh, we've got a little crate of berries just down there that we'll hopefully bring over. We've got some berries, but it was getting down to the wire, frankly. But with the carrots being delivered and indeed the sunflowers not too far behind, it should be fine. We've got enough berries to get that one on the go. So with that, the next thing I'm going to want is two new storages for our uh, two crops types. Uh, rather, two crop types. We'll have them... Uh, well, actually, would it be better to pop these down here? I can't easily fit it in there, sadly. Uh, but I could. I could definitely pop two down here and have a much larger field available. Um, I don't really want to pop, pop these down there, though. The issue with that being that this would then use up valuable growing space. And I guess to a certain degree we're doing that here anyway. But it feels a little bit better to do it up here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, once again, default to none, allow carrots. Default to none. And I'll allow sunflower seeds, which should be all the way down there. There we go. I want the carrots to be ready first, and then this one to be ready soon after that. We've unlocked 36 technology points, which is uh, not too terribly bad, all things considered. Though, it is time for the beavers to have a bit of a snooze, it seems. How many logs have we got? We've got 46 logs. All right, well, there are a couple of things we could do. Shelter-wise, we've increased their life expectancy and their work speed fantastically. They're about to get carrots, and not long after that, sunflower seeds. Very happy about that. Now, social life. Uh, 
this is something that affects the the overall uh, happiness of the beavers as a whole, but doesn't. I'm going to actually prioritize planting. So you'll grab crops and then you'll immediately replant them so that they'll be ready sooner. But uh, the uh, main thing with social life is it doesn't actually provide any bonus. Not these ones anyway. Later on ones, kind of. Especially spirituality. I, I kind of put that in with the, the sort of leisure stuff. But uh, these don't. But they do give you overall well-being. Now I don't know if that has any actual bearing on the game. And whereas if I were playing this as Folk Tales, I would totally prioritize getting that, regardless of any any codified bonus. But we're not playing Folk Tales, we're playing the Iron Teeth. And the Iron Teeth are all about efficiency, and so due to that efficiency, we're not going to build it just yet. We might later on, just so that we've got uh, places for our beavers to congregate. Um, but that'll be more of a visual tell of the general well-being of the settlement and right now that is not my focus uh do we need this active we do not need it active do we need that one active we kind of do yes okay well uh, time for a new lumber area i feel somewhere down here would be able to grab most of the trees and in fact if we popped it about there it would be able to grab pretty much all of the trees uh, let's pop that one there and they can start grabbing all of these trees down here as well now, I know it might be making you a little bit uh, nervous that I'm just chopping trees with reckless abandon and not replanting them. It it makes me nervous, too. Uh, so, know that you're not alone, but we will be getting to uh, replanting uh, the trees as soon as we've got enough points to unlock the forest there, which requires 60 points. We're, we're over halfway there, and I think that's a, that's a fairly good place to be, all things considered. But on the topic of nice places, I think this is pretty much a perfect place to wrap up this first episode. We have managed to make it through our first drought, and that probably means that we're in a good place to make it through at least our second, and maybe even our third. That we are going to have to continue expanding out our food stocks, and more importantly, our water supplies, and hopefully get to the point where we can control the flow of water a little bit better than we have up to now but we're going to have to find out how our iron teeth do in the next episode with the promise of the forester uh, soon on the way i really do hope that you have enjoyed this one though and i look forward to your tips and feedback down in the comments but that is going to be it from me and all of the fantastic cast of characters that have helped me form this colony thank you ever so much for your continued channel support it means the world and I look forward to introducing more of you in the next episode. But until next time, and as always, do take care, everyone.